Hey everybody, this is Tom and this is Like a Math Class. In this video, we're going to be talking about geometric sequences. Uh, we've talked about sequences in other videos and now we're going to see what makes something geometric. That's going to be our first thing that we're looking at. We're going to look at some key vocabulary and some key notation. And if we have some time, we're going to squeeze in a, an example in here too. So let's get to it. What makes a sequence geometric? A sequence is geometric when we have a common value that's multiplied or divided from one term to the next. Now, we say divided, we say multiplied or divided, kind of like we said added or subtracted with our uh, arithmetic, but we call this now a common ratio. And we call it a common ratio because, and we use the term R, we call it a common ratio because when we say divided, we're actually going to be multiplying it by a fraction. As we analyze this and we go from the first term to the second term to the third term to the fourth term and so on, we're looking for a pattern. Um, and you might even notice that right away, going from the first to the second, we're going to multiply by two. From the second to the third, we're going to multiply by two and so on. It seems like all of these are being multiplied by two. That's not an x squared, that's multiply by two. Let's make that a little bit clearer. Multiply by two. Um, so how do we determine this as a ratio? So in the other videos, in the, the arithmetic videos, we had talked about using notation like uh, u of one for our first term, and we had u of n for our nth term, our nth term, or sometimes we use this to define our general formula. For geometric sequences, we're going to look also at R, and R is our common ratio, as I mentioned up above. And we can find our common ratio, rato, ratio, we can find our common ratio by taking, uh, by taking the second term and dividing the first term. Uh, dividing it by the first term. We're taking the third term and dividing it by the second term. So what we had said in the other video um, for arithmetic sequences is that if we said, well, let's let, let's let n equal 3, then our, rate, uh, our r would equal, if n is 3, it would equal 12 divided by 6, right? Because if we have 12 divided by 6, that's going to equal 2. And we can see here going from 6 to 12, we get a value of 2. So we're actually multiplying by 2. So to get our common ratio, or we could do it again, we could do it with 24 divided by 12, right? So if, if n is equal to 4, then we're going to have r is equal to u of 4 divided by u of 3, uh, which would be 24 divided by 12, which is 2 as well. Or if we want to generalize this, if we just say, uh, if we're just looking at the nth term, then we can say that r is going to equal, well, let's see, if we had the n is 4, we had uh, u of 4 in the numerator. If we had 3, we had u of 3 in the numerator. So if, if we have the nth term, we've got u of n in the numerator. And if you notice here, ah, down below in the denominator, we've got n minus 1. So if here n was 4, we're looking at 3. So we're looking at u of n minus 1. Now, if we can calculate those two things, then that's going to give us our common ratio. Now, in the formula booklet for IB that might look slightly different, maybe they say, hey, you're going to have u of n, I'll say or here, maybe u of n is in the denominator. So now we're going to say, ah, uh, so if we look at this one here and we say n is 4, u of 4, then to, to find the common ratio, we would have to have the fifth term up here, because this is, notice this is always one less in the denominator. The term number is one less in the denominator than in the numerator. So up here we would have u of five. So I think in your formula booklet, it's, it might look like this, but it's good to also always know what it looks like in both notations, because it's just getting you comfortable with the notation in general. 
So in uh, the numerator here, then we're going to have u of n plus 1. To make something, to find a common ratio, that's also going to equal u of n over u of n minus 1 or u of n plus 1 over u of n. So any way you want to look at it, uh, you're still getting that same common ratio. Uh, again, it doesn't matter which of these you use. The real big thing is that you are actually considering, ah, I'm basically working backwards. I'm taking this 6 and I'm dividing it by 3 to find this common denominator or this common ratio. Yeah, I'm taking this 12, dividing it by 6 and finding the same common ratio. So that's how we, we find that. So uh, uh, the, the geometric sequence is when you, got, when you have something multiplied or divided from one term to the next, which uh, uses our common ratios. How do we actually find the general formula? Find the general formula, uh, which we'll call u of n for the sequence above. Okay. So again, we're going to use 3, 6, 12, 24. We're going to use some general notation uh, to try and build that general formula that will work for every single uh, geometric sequence. So using uh, a similar method that we have in the other, in the, the arithmetic video, we could say, well, u of 1, that's again, that's just going to be u of 1, right? There's no change there. We're, we're, that's our starting point. At u of 2, we're going to take u of 1 and we're going to multiply it by some common ratio. Then to get to u of 3, we're going to take that same u of 2, we're going to multiply it by our common ratio and that will give us our, our, uh, our third term. So again, similarly, if we look up here, 3 times 2 gets us 6, 6 times 2 gets us 12. But we already know here that uh, u of 2 is equal to u of 1 times r. So let's rewrite this u of 2 here and let's use u of 1 times r. That's going to be the same thing, right? That, that's, our, that's our purple from up above. And then we have to multiply it by r again for this r right there. And so if we simplify this now, we have u of 1 times r squared. All right, let's try one more just to kind of see the pattern. You probably are already seeing it, but I always like to go just one step extra just to make sure that it is really jumping out at you. So u of 4 is u of 3 times r. u of 3 is u of 1 times r squared. So that's going to be u of 1 times r squared times r. Again, this r here is this r here. This is our u of 3, which is our u of 3 from up here, right? Our u of 3. We end up with u of 1 r cubed. So as we start to note, this is cubed for the fourth position. This is squared for the third position. This is r to the first power to the second position. So we can write the general formula u of n for any geometric sequence is going to be u of 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. This is the formula that you'll see in your formula book. That's the one that you need to be comfortable with, that you can work with. Um, and again, you don't necessarily need to, you don't necessarily need to memorize this, but it is a good thing to have a good understanding on how to work with it. Consider the sequence 27, 9, 3, 1, 1 third, and so on, right? These ellipses mean keep, keep going. Show that the, ge the, the, the sequence is geometric. Again, show that there's our command term, which means use all the information that you can to derive this value, to show that this thing is geometric. So right there, we've got a clue. We need to use the geometric formula. So again, let's put this up here. U of n is equal to u of 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. To show that something's geometric, we have to know that each term is multiplied by a common ratio from one step to the next, from one term to the next. So 
I know that if I, if I do that for A, I'm going to say that I need to look at this thing divided by this one, right? We always said the second one divided by the first one, the third one divided by the second one. Uh, we're going to have R is equal to 9 divided by 27. So when we simplify this, uh, we divide this down and we've got uh, divide this by 3. So we've got 3 and 9, which is 1 and 3rd, right? 1 third. Okay, so then we take 3 divided by 9, and we know that's going to be 1 third, because we just did that right here. And then we're going to take, whoops, then we're going to take 1 divided by 3. So R is equal to 1 divided by 3. Aha, so we're still looking. These things are all coming out to be the same thing. And then finally, R is equal to 1 third divided by 1, which we know, of course, is 1 third. So here we have shown that this sequence is geometric. Now let's find the general formula. Well, this is nice because we've actually done a lot of the work already. Here we've got u of 1 is equal to 27. We have r is equal to 1 third. So all we have to do is drop these values right into here and we can simplify and, and we have our general formula. The general formula is going to be u of n is equal to 27 times 1 third to the n minus 1 power. Now, we can't do a whole lot here, right? Because we can't multiply these two things together uh, because this is uh, this doesn't have the same power. We've got different bases, different powers. Um, what you sometimes could do uh, if you want to be extra thorough is you could start breaking these apart with your, your exponent rules and you could do 27 times uh, 3 to the negative 1 power, right? That's how you get 1 third into a whole number. And we've got it to the n minus 1 power. Here we've got a power times a power. So we get 27 times 3 to the negative n plus 1 power. All right, where are you going with this? Now, remember, if you're adding your exponents, that means you're multiplying these two things together. So 27 times 3 to the negative n times 3 to the first power, right? So here... Remember, if you're multiplying two powers, two bases with different powers, you add up the exponents. Here we had an addition. So now that I do this, now that I've separated them, now I've got a straight multiplication problem so I can combine this with this 27 over here. So we're going to have 81 times 3 to the negative n power, or maybe you say uh, 81 times 1 third to the nth power. Right, either one of those is going to work. Um, but there you go. So you've got your uh, general formula for this uh, for this function or for this sequence. Excuse me, and then find the eleventh term and write it as a fraction. All right. So that probably means that I'm not going to be able to use my uh, calcul or I'm I'm not going to. I don't know. Am I going to be able to use my calculator? I don't know. That's that seems that seems pretty. Uh, pretty intense, but let's let's give it a shot, shall we? We want to find u of 11 is equal to 81 times 1 third to the 11th power. Oh my goodness. So 81. So here's what I'm going to do, right? I see this and there's no way I'm going to multiply all that out because I can't simplify all that. That's going to be really hard. So just like I used over here and I used this idea of adding I'm going to take out four of these things. I'm going to take out four of these powers. So I can do that because, look, if I've got one-third to the fourth power times one-third to the seventh power, if I, wanted to, if I wanted to multiply these two things together, I'm going to have one-third to the four plus seven power, which is the eleventh power, right? But I also know that three to the fourth power is 81. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So if I separate this out, look what I just did here. Times 1 third to the 4th power, times 1 third to the 7th power. Now, 
what I just did was it was some mental math there. It was a, some some number work there. Uh, you might not be jumping right into this, but this is a way that you, if you go back to your exponent rules, your, your laws of exponents, and you have those down, then you'll be able to do some of this manipulation to kind of do some of the mental work to, to simplify this. Now, to be completely honest, I don't think IB will give you a question where you've got to do this level of computation without a calculator. Uh, but this is just an exercise for us to make sure that we're really understanding what's going on with this problem and, and uh, kind of reviewing some of our old uh, uh, exponent rules as well. So this is going to be 81 times 1 over 81, all right, cool, and 1 over 3 to the 7th power. So, of course, this stuff simplifies out down to 1, so we're left with 1 third to the 7th power. All right, so now at this point, yes, I could do all the multiplication uh, to get 3 times 3 times 3 to 7 more times, uh, but I'm going to save us a little bit of time, and let's just say 3 raised to the power of 7. There we go, 2,187. So this is going to equal 1 over 2,000. What did I say? 2,187. So there we go. Uh, so that's how we work with geometric sequences. That's how we find the equation for a, geome a general geometric sequence and how we use some of the information that we know uh, to find those general formulas and to work through some of the problems. We'll go through some slightly more advanced problems in the next video. Talk to you then.